Kia ora, I'm the Kiwi Coder, and this is episode 7 of AI. In this video, I'll cover how to equip multiple weapons, reload them, and also switch between them. You can see here when the player gets too close to the agent, the agent automatically switches over to the pistol, and vice versa, when the agent gets too far away, it'll automatically switch back to the rifle. Cool, let's get into it. You can check out the previous episode in the link above. So this is where we got to in the previous episode, the AI can shoot the player, except the problem that we have now is uh, when the AI picks up the pistol, it is still playing the assault equip animation. You can see here the hands are off, so let's fix that. The way I'm going to solve this is using animator override controllers. I've created two equip animations in Blender, one for the assault weapon and one for the pistol weapon. And what the animator override controller lets us do is replace an animation from the state machine with a different animation. So first I'm just going to rename these animation states to make them something a bit more generic. And now I'm going to create a new animator override controller called AI pistol controller and assign the default controller to the pistol controller. This lets us now replace the weapon assault equip animation with the weapon pistol equip animation. Cool, so this doesn't actually do anything yet because that pistol controller is not being used. So we need to assign that pistol controller to the Rakehouse weapon script. So create a new public property of type runtime animator controller. And now on the prefabs, the weapon prefabs themselves, we can assign that new animator override controller. Uh, to the weapon. So for both the assault, I'm just going to use the default one, but for the pistol prefab, I'm going to use the AI pistol controller. And now finally, we need to just set this on the main animator. So inside the AI weapon script, when we equip a new weapon, we just swap out the runtime animator controller with the animator coming from the weapon. So let's test this out. So the pistol is now playing the correct equip animation and the assault is also playing the correct animation. Cool. Now to implement reloading for the agent, it's basically the same as it was for the player. So I'd highly recommend checking out that video if you're unfamiliar with it. There's basically four animation events, detach magazine, drop magazine, refill magazine, and attach magazine. And these animation events are on both the assault reload animation and also the pistol reload animation. So to wire these in for the agent, we just need to create a new animation state and this is going to be called reload. Create a new trigger animation parameter called reload weapon and just create a new transition from the equip to the reload state using that animation parameter. Now we also create a transition back to the equip state and transitioning to the last frame of the equip animation. This just ensures we return to a fully equipped state after we finish reloading. Finally, we just assign the assault reload animation to the animation state. And on the pistol override controller, we assign the pistol reload animation. To trigger the reload weapon state, I'm going to do this inside AI weapons, but first, uh, just going to borrow some code to handle those animation events from the reload weapon script we created for the player. So just paste those at the bottom of AI weapons. And this just handles the four animation events I described previously. So we can replace the active weapon with a current weapon. The left hand we can get directly from the animator using get bone transform, passing in the left hand body bone. And the ammo widget can just be removed entirely. To fix up the compiler errors, we just need to recreate the properties that were inside the reload weapon script. Uh, so that's the magazine hand, the drop force, and the is reloading uh, state, which we'll revisit a little bit later on. The next thing to do is just hooking in the switch statement into our on animation event function, uh, because this has already been called for our animation events. So just trying to unify this stuff, I'm going to create a new function called attach weapon and just call that from the, the switch statement instead of using this if block. So just create a new case for the attached weapon and call the attached weapon function. Cool. For the AI to reload the weapon, it's gonna need a new public function called reload weapon, and it's gonna call this function from the state machine anytime it wants to reload its weapon. So this function is going to invoke a new coroutine called reload weapon animation. And inside this coroutine, I'm just gonna set the is reloading state to true um, and also set it to false once the animation finishes and also set the trigger parameter that we created earlier called reload weapon and finally just disable the weapon IK before playing this animation <laughs> otherwise it looks like really bad but check it out 
and just call the reload weapon animation coroutine from the reload weapon script. Uh, also just check the weapon is active before we try to reload. This just prevents double reloads from happening. Now I'm going to merge these two boolean states into a single uh, state called weapon state just because it's a bit easier to manage. So this is going to have holstered, active and reloading for now. Um, and just create a new property for the weapon state, initializing that to holstered. So we can get rid of those two boolean parameters now. And I'm just going to uh, create a few helper functions to check which state we're in. Uh, one for the active state, one for the holstered, and one for the reloading state. Now inside the update function, we can just check is active. And there's a few other places to fix up inside the reload weapon scripts. And here we just need to assign the state to uh, active when we when the equip animation finishes and set the state to holstered when the holster animation starts. Finally, we can set the reloading state to reloading and active when the reload animation finishes. And we can just get rid of that one there. That's no longer needed. The agent is also going to need to know which weapon is the current weapon, so just make that public. To reload the weapon, open up the attack player state and create a new function called reload weapon, passing in the agent as a parameter and just calling that function from the update loop of the state. Now we can get the current weapon from the agent and check if we have a weapon and if the weapon ammo count is less than zero, then we can just call the reload weapon uh, function that we created. So testing this out. Yay, now the agent reloads every time it runs out of ammo. Amazing. And also testing the pistol. Cool, it looks like the correct animation is being played for the pistol through the override controller. Now it's time to equip multiple weapons to the agent. So it's currently only got a single weapon. Uh, the way that we did it for the player was using an array with an index to represent the current weapon. So I'm just gonna do something similar for the agent here. So just creating an array for the weapons of size two. This is the primary and the secondary weapon and a current index uh, for the, the currently equipped weapon. Now I'm gonna turn the current weapon into a property and just return the weapon at the current index. The current weapon property can't be assigned directly because I made it read only. So here we just need to assign the current index to null instead. And the equip function actually needs to assign the weapon to the weapon slot index. This was covered in the switching weapons video from the TPS series. So check that out if you'd like to know more. The find weapon state bails out when we have a weapon equipped. So instead I'm gonna change this to basically make it look for two weapons. So I'm gonna create a new function called count and this is gonna loop through each weapon and check if we have a weapon at that slot. And if we do, we just increment the count. Now we can use this function instead of the has weapon and just check if we have two weapons equipped, then we move to the attack player state. Otherwise we just Basically just want to find another weapon. So testing this out, the AI should now find the closest weapon, find the next closest weapon, and then start attacking the player. Awesome. For the agent to be able to switch weapons, we need to create a new public interface. So I'm going to create a new enum called weapon slot, and the agent will use this to select which weapon it wants, uh, which weapon it wants to equip, basically. So create a new function called switch weapon that just takes the weapon slot as a parameter. And much the same as we've done before, we need a new coroutine to play the animation. So this is gonna be called uh, switch weapon animation. And here, this one is actually uh, pretty simple. It just takes a index as a parameter of which weapon it to switch to. And it just calls uh, holster weapon animation, sets the current index to the new index and then calls equip weapon animation. In the switch weapon function, first we just check if if we're already holstered, then all we need to do is just set the current index to that new weapon slot index and then call activate weapon and the rest will be handled for us. 
For the second part, we just check if the uh, the slot that we're going to equip is different from the one that we already have equipped. Then we just start that coroutine, the switch weapon animation. There's still one more thing to fix, and it's basically when we are switching weapons, um, we just want to make sure that we don't try to switch weapon like while we are holstering or activating a, a weapon. So I'm going to create two new intermediate states called holstering and activating. And then inside the um, the equip weapon animation, I'm going to set the activating when we enter it and the active at the end. Similarly for the holster weapon animation, just set holstered at the end and holstering at the beginning. And then uh, the reloading one, that's okay. We go into reloading and then back to active. So now inside the switch weapon, we can just check if we're active and we can be sure that the weapon is fully active at this point, which is uh, much safer. So now for the player to, um, for the agent to check if it needs to change weapon, it needs to know which weapon it currently has equipped. So I'm going to create a new property for the, the current weapon slot. And inside the attack player state, uh, we can create a new function called select weapon, passing in the agent as a parameter, and a, another function called choose weapon. This is basically separating out the kind of the decision making process from the actual action, which I'm hoping to cover at some point. So here we're just uh, we're just gonna make a random decision basically. Just check if the player is within a certain range, um, and if it is, we're gonna pick the primary weapon. If it's not, we're gonna pick the uh, the secondary weapon. So here I'm just checking if the distance is greater than seven. Pretty arbitrary, um, yeah. So inside select weapon, we can now basically choose which weapon the agent wants um, by calling the choose weapon function. And we can see if the weapon it chose is different to the weapon that we have equipped. If it is, then we just call switch weapon, passing in that new weapon that it wants equipped. Finally, we just need to call the select weapon from the update function of the state. And one more minor thing is I'm just going to add that, that 7 to the agent config so I can configure it from the, uh, the scriptable object. And as soon as this finishes compiling, test it out. So the agent collects both weapons, equips the assault, and <laughs> it looks, uh, looks pretty wrong. Um, and this is because the weapon IK issue that I mentioned before, um, we basically just need to disable the, um, the IK every time we uh, holster the weapon and then re-enable it when the, uh, the equip animation finishes playing. So testing this out again. Cool, that looks good now. Um, except the pistol was not actually firing. Um, that's because we set firing to true when we enter the state, but after we switch weapons, we also need to set firing to true on that weapon. So we can just do that inside the select weapon function. Cool, and now if I run like far away from the agent, it'll switch to the assault rifle and when the agent gets too close, then it switches back to the pistol. Awesome. And that's it for this video guys. Massive thank you to all the Patreon supporters this month. If you are interested in the project files, then please check out the link in the description. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Kakite.